we're seeing an increasing issue over in Europe. Airplanes across Europe are increasingly having issues with their GPS transponders and their GPS navigation systems. Um, and this is not just a jamming issue. This is not just that they're not able to detect satellites, but rather they're detecting false satellites. This is called spoofing. So uh, not only are they not getting the, the correct information, but they're actually getting incorrect information, which can send them um, thinking that they're in absolutely uh, the wrong place or that there are wrong altitudes and everything like that. It is such the point that pilots across Northern Europe, uh, from Poland up to Finland, uh, over to Sweden, over to the Baltic states are actually switching off their GPS units, uh, lest their computer systems and their airplanes actually think that they're in absolutely the wrong place and uh, automated controls start trying to do things. This is due to jamming and spoofing, uh, probably by the Russian over in Europe. we got a lot to talk about. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar. I'm an accountant by trade, and uh, we are covering the news stories that are out there that are being buried or covered up or not being discussed in depth. So thanks so much for joining with us. So GPS, of course, is is based off of satellites up there in orbit. Now, they're not all uh, in geosynchronous orbit or anything like that. They're relatively close. They're spinning around a lot faster. Uh, generally speaking, there are 27 satellites uh, uh, that you are receiving, you can receive signals up to uh, if you were to pick up all the signals that you could pick up. Um, but those constellations do not necessarily only have 27 satellites. Um, the main uh, GPS uh, system out there right now actually has, I believe, 32 satellites. And so five of those satellites are basically switching on and off um, and the amongst the other ones. So if something gets hit by debris or whatever like that, they can uh, switch off one of the satellites and turn on another one. Um, they have 27 at, at any given time. So it's a dynamic system that is happening up there. And I believe we have multiple constellations. China has its own constellation. Russia has its own constellation. I believe the United States and allies have multiple constellations constellations uh, constellations of satellites and I believe the US military has its own constellation as well so all that to say um, the US constellations can be used for military purposes though too they were originally designed for military purposes they then fuzzied up the data originally uh, to consumers and then you know had a much more accurate uh, for for the United States military and then they eventually decided that it has such uh, great commercial benefits that they switched on the accuracy for everybody. And that's why your cell phone and uh, everything like that, even if you switch into airplane mode, your cell phone can actually tell you very, very accurately if you have a clear uh, line of sight on the sky. Uh, so if you have like a GPS unit these days, it's kind of like, why not just use your phone? Because your phone is basically as good as the Garmin's and that kind of stuff out there. Um, but uh, we have become very highly over-reliant upon a lot of this technology. Aircraft now fly a lot by wire. They fly uh, based on the GPSs, um, and so that's how they know where they are. And unfortunately, sometimes they even use uh, things uh, that they shouldn't, they get a little too over-reliant upon them, like uh, like using it for altitude and stuff like that. When I was uh, over in Central Asia and we were up in the mountains, we were up in an area that was not mapped very well. And because it wasn't mapped very well, um, <laughs> it, it would tell me I was in the wrong country, <laughs> okay? Um, I was relatively close to the border, but uh, because the altitude issues, uh, it, it thought I was much lower altitude than I was. And so therefore, because of that, it was able, it projected uh, me sideways over into a, a, into another country, right? And uh, I was like, no, nah, that's not where I am. And uh, so the GPS was kind of useless uh, because it didn't have that. And you, early uh, U.S. intervention into um, Afghanistan um, back during uh, when we were fighting the Taliban, uh, we had some of those issues with uh, dropping ordnance and stuff like that, that, that the ordnance was hitting completely in the wrong place because the GPS, uh, those devices didn't have the area mapped either. And so that they were slamming into to the pr previous mountain ridge. <laughs> Uh, because the GPS didn't know that there's a there's an obstacle in the way, uh, or 
or just the fact that it, it thought that the altitude of the target is here um, when in fact the altitude of the target was something else completely and therefore um, it moves it <laughs> horizontally uh, by perspective, right? So we have the aircraft over in Europe. Now Kaliningrad uh, is that little uh, bubble in Europe. Uh, it's between um, Lithuania and, um, and Poland. Um, it's sandwiched in there. It doesn't actually touch any other Russian territory. Um, so it's, it's a little ways uh, from uh, the Suwalki Gap. Uh, it's a little different uh, ways from Belarus, but it doesn't even touch Belarus. Uh, that, that area of Lithuania that uh, is between Belarus and uh, Kaliningrad, Russia, is called the Suwalki Gap. And then there is like a rail line that they basically kind of have right of way to uh, send whatever they want to across Lithuania. And uh, Russia is always just dreadfully uh, concerned that, that that gap is going to get cut, the rail line is going to get cut. And so they have, they have a lot of troops, they have a lot of equipment pre-positioned in Kaliningrad and it is like right up against the Polish border. So, and uh, Lithuania too. So Lithuania and Poland are very sensitive about this. Russia is very sensitive about this, but Russia has packed a lot of electronic warfare capabilities into this little, um, little land island, so to speak. And so what we're hearing is in that general area, we're having these GPS issues and not, like I said, not just jamming. It's not like they can't lock onto the satellites. It's that they're finding false satellites that are in the wrong place. And it really seems that Russia is testing out its capabilities to spoof uh, GPS satellites. So they're basically creating a signal that um, seems to be originating from a location that, uh, you know, it's not necessarily just like, here's the transmission tower, and so the signal's originating from here. They can actually make it so that it seems like the signal's originating from elsewhere, and that that signal is, is uh, very similar to, or the perfect replica of a, what the satellite would actually be transmitting. And not only that, but they're also tracking which satellites are active at, at, at any given time and where they should be roughly. And so that, that's a very complicated process uh, to be able to spoof satellites. It's a whole different level of electronic warfare. And that's what we're seeing out there. Now, we're supposed to have um, these Block 3A satellites um, it, with our GPS constellation up there. Uh, basically, they keep phasing out and retiring satellites off the constellation and putting up new ones. And as they put up new ones, of course, they put up better, more sophisticated, more resistant to hacking and spoofing, right? And so we have uh, a number of three A's up there, which is the latest generation of uh, GPS satellites. They're ready to, to put more, the rest up. The problem is that they've, they've banked with uh, uh, ULA, United Launch Alliance, which is Boeing and Lockheed Martin. And uh, unfortunately, those rockets haven't been taking off, mostly to the fact, well, one, it's Boeing, uh, and two, uh, they are, they're supposed to use their Amazon engines to get up there. So they're supposed to use Blue Origins engines. Uh, Jeff Bezos owns that company, um, and they've just been having one nightmare after another through BE4 engines are supposed to power the, uh, uh, it's the Vulcan, whatever, I forget what it is, um, the Vulcan Centaur, I believe it is, uh, that, that rocket, it's supposed to be powered um, by the BE4 engines, uh, which have been having major issues, they've been delayed, um, I, I swear, uh, Jeff Bezos and his Blue Origin company have learned perfectly perfectly uh, from, from Boeing about delaying things and how government contracts should work. Uh, comparing them to SpaceX, it's, it's just like night and day. SpaceX uh, runs like a technology company, whereas Blue Origin uh, runs very much like NASA and very much like everything is over budget and way behind schedule. And that's exactly what we're seeing with them constantly. And so that's why we have a bunch of Block 3A GPS uh, satellites ready to go. They're sitting there waiting, um, but there's no rocket to take them up there, and they can't just slap them onto a, uh, uh, you know, a, 
a uh, SpaceX rocket because they're contracted to go with L ULA. So because the way the government contracts work, they can't just be like, ha, ah, fine, let's just get them up, up there with somebody else. Um, so, but the 3A block uh, satellites are going to be more resistant to spoofing, um, but we only have a few up there so far, and we do need to get more up there before we can really have more resistance to them. They have a military grade um, of resistance to uh, to spoofing. So, uh, until that happens, um, pilots across the uh, the uh, Baltic Sea and uh, North. Uh, uh, the northern parts of the of Europe are going to have to just kind of deal with uh, their sat their GPS signals going all wonky. Now uh, the Russians can mess with the U.S. and European GPS systems um, because they've been basically locked out of the GPS, so it doesn't affect them. They have their own constellation um, of satellites that for that they use for geo positioning and for their weapons and all their military and everything like that. So they can spoof and mess with ours without actually impacting themselves or like their businesses or anything like that. So that's something that, uh, that we're seeing this electronic warfare going back and forth. And it is a way that, uh, that, that Russia can attack Europe in a, a way that's more like a cyber attack or uh, an acceptable way that's not like military use. Uh, it's not like they're uh, sending tanks across the border. They're just broadcasting and spoofing and, and doing all sorts of signal warfare kind of stuff. And that's what we're seeing Russia doing right now, which is a major escalation. Okay, We've been seeing this about since the beginning of the year so far. And uh, it's kind of slowly coming out because pilots and militaries don't really want to admit that this is what's been going on. They just want to uh, just kind of uh, not talk about it. But uh, they're trying to fix it but it's gonna take a while to fix it uh, because you have to, have to put up new satellites. And in addition to that, will that even uh, totally solve the problem? And we don't know the answer to that just yet. But um, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, and it's not affecting anyone in the United States just yet, but it is interesting to see that they're messing with those satellites and the signals from the satellites. Could that impact us? It absolutely could if they have transmission stations anywhere near the United States. Uh, or any of our other allies. If they can mess enough with the military grade um, transmissions, that would mean that our uh, projectiles will land in the wrong coordinates. Um, they can move uh, that and uh, even theoretically they could, if they're advanced enough, actually retarget um, our weapons to hit friendly troops. Uh, that, that would be something that uh, it would be much more sophisticated, but if they can do that, it would be an ability that would really cause us a lot of problems. Um, of course, our allies over in, uh, like where I am right now in Taiwan, that would be a very big concern because there's such a heavy reliance upon sophisticated weaponry here in Taiwan. Uh, that's one of the things I'm going to be talking about in a future video is about how Taiwan is very much uh, buying all the, the toys with the bells and whistles. And because of that, they're relying on superior, superior um, technology and, and much better technology fighting against much greater numbers. And so if your technology doesn't work uh, and you're relying on that to counteract the fact that you're way outnumbered, that is even a much bigger problem. All right, friends, that's what I got for you so far today. Um, I will see you guys later. If you want to check out another video from this channel, there's one right up here. Um, and like I said, those videos on Taiwan will be coming out in just a little bit. Thanks so much for watching. Steve Poplar of The Poplar Report, out.